Did you like my uh, <laughs> oh, no. encounter on Assassin's Creed? Why is it every game I get a hold of something game breaking happens? Because life just doesn't like you. That's the problem. No, it really doesn't. For clarification, for those who've played Assassin's Creed Syndicate, you do gang takeovers against the Blighters. Now, this was all going splendidly well. Spiffingly well. Spiffingly well, if we're going Victorian ill English, me old chum. Of course. So anyway, there was this one Blighter. You know, every other Blighter is very dead. Mm -hmm. Now, I made sure of that. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I threw a, like, a... A nitrate crate at one of them, so it exploded on impact. It was very, very amusing. I don't think I've even gotten to that point of using crates like that. <laughs> it's so fun. I'm terrible at combat in in Syndicate. It's terrible. Only because <laughs> I'm used to the newer ones now. It's like, yeah, press, it is. press B to dodge. No, I'd rather just dodge myself, thank, thanks very yeah. much. It is very, very weird when you go to like Syndicate and then to... Like something like Origins, where the combat system is very different. But yeah, yeah. So when you hide in like the hay piles, and you know you can like go to assassinate them when they come near. There was like one of the tall ones that came, like the brute, brutish ones. I don't know if you've got to them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the ones with the cleavers, and they're really annoying because they just do nothing but block. It's mm. really annoying. Aye. So anyway, I thought, right, I'm gonna get you. So the animation went in to stab him, but then like he just like sank into the floor and he was just stuck playing possum like he, like the animations and stuff like as if he was like still talking and stuff but he was just oh, stuck so, in the ground oh because because I, mean, I did watch the video and i was like is he talking because it looks like his mouth is moving is it just like a glitch <laughs> or is he actually talking i, yeah, I was just so like he, confused he was just stuck in the ground it was literally like uh, that friggin' Doctor Who episode with the absorbable off where Ursula's face is in the concrete. It was just literally Push like. Push everyone! Push! <laughs> oh. I was like, oh, for God's sake. So I had to restart the whole thing. I was just like, yeah, I just can't be bloody arse now. <laughs> That's enough for today. And I'm guessing in, or in order to rectify that, because like, oh, I can't be bothered to play any Assassin's Creed. Did you watch any episodes of Doctor Who? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I started series 12. Yes, you did. It's fine. But... We're not going to talk about we'll talk about that next week. That one will be uh, that one will be interesting to be honest. That one It will be. It'll be interesting. It well, I mean, be. this one will. I've uh, also watched a certain film. Mm. I finally watched Late Mongo. Oh. Okay. Okay. Oh no. Oh this, oh, this better not be the most disappointing moment of my life, and I'm including my birth. How <laughs> oh, that was dark. <laughs> it's... Now, don't you interrupt me on this, right? Not until I'm finished, at least. That's fine. It's not good. It's fantastic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the kind of sound I was expecting to make, but... <sighs> That was and very really sexual. <laughs> yeah, okay, this is really chilling. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. Like, I didn't sit in the dark like you did, but, you know, there was enough there to really put me on edge. Like, my God. There are some things in that film that are going to stick with me to the end of my life. <sighs> Let's just say that the... um, It's one of those weird things, because now I could actually talk about spoilers, because you have seen it. Yeah. So... Weirdly enough, for, for an episode dedicated... Again, we're still, we're, we're still in the pre-rambles. Spoilers for Lake Mungo in this episode about Doctor Who Series 11. Randomly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll put that in the time codes as well. Um, well, let's face it. Lake Mungo is just miles better than the fucking series we're going to be talking about anyway. So well, Yeah, just like by, by default of its very existence. Um, <laughs> but mostly just like the bit at the very end with the nope. camera footage... Mm -mm. And, it, and you mm -mm. just see her. At that nope. point, that is at that point nope. that my that my hands went straight over my face. <laughs> I was like, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, absolutely not. No, nope, I think nope. what makes it even more chilling is like it's it's obviously very low cell quality, but then you just see this like face, and you're like, oh no. <laughs> even like the bits with, like during the like climax of the film well documentary slash film because it it does that really well i think so yeah. it's definitely a newer take on like found footagey stuff it's not all very, found very footage clever. but it's very very clever yeah yeah 
the bit where they see where they have like photos of Alice and it's like so I went back on the footage I looked and there's like Alice like in the background of a window I'm just like for God's sake will you just get an exorcist over here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> will, will you just get somebody to just banish this spirit yeah. please <laughs> yeah it was super creepy Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of The Real Podcasters, the show where we talk all things movies, TV shows, video games and a bunch of other things in bloody bloody blah. It doesn't matter, Dan, because it's time. It's about time. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yes, uh, my name is Regan and as ever I'm joined by my incredibly, really, really, really happy co-host. It's Dan. Hello, Dan. <laughs> oh, the face of sin. <laughs> Hi everybody. Hi Dan. Hi. Hi. I'm uh, not. I'm not even going to say how are you because I. I don't need to. I really don't. Put it this way. Here is a pre 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 warning. This may just be the most explicit podcast episode in the entire world. Yeah, it's going to be a sweary one. I think it's safe to say. Oh yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Surprisingly enough, though, I think most of the swearing is actually going to come from you. I mean, I've got plenty of things to say, but. I think it's different because... You see, I originally had a sort of script of what I was going to say. I was like, yeah, that I just need to cut back a little bit. I'm getting a bit too angry in these podcasts now. Well, well you see, that's the thing, because I've been sitting on, on this series for four years. You've been sitting on this series for four days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quite literally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yes, as the title suggests, and as uh, as the previous episode said, we are now at the tail end of our Hooniverse retrospective. We're now at the series... That made me want to talk about Doctor Who on the internet. <laughs> Just because I had to rant. It is Doctor Who Series 11. Um, A.K.A. the Chibnall era. The Chibnall era has begun. Um, we've got a brand new Doctor. We've got brand new companions. No, sorry. Not companions. Fam. New writers. Probably written by iRobots, to be completely honest. And a bunch of new monsters. Basically a soft reboot of the show. Much like the last series. So, seems a bit redundant, quite frankly. Um, a reboot of a reboot. A reboot of a reboot. They've basically yeah. done the horror franchise route. Let's reboot the reboot already. Um, yes, time codes are in the description, as ever, if you want to jump around uh, to certain aspects of the series. Um, but we're just going to kick things straight off, because this is going to be a long one. This is going to be a sad one. This is going to be a fun one. It's going to be fun, but angry, quite frankly. <laughs> Uh, if not if not just every emotion you can think of every single possible emotion is not in the characters in series 11 uh, so well no it's not because i generally think cardboard doesn't have feelings yaz has feelings in future yeah series. in one episode <laughs> uh right let's just let's just move swiftly on to series 11 so as i said um this is kind of envisioned mostly as a soft reboot of sorts you could start with this series having never seen an episode of doctor who heaven forbid um and you can learn all there is to know about the franchise in that you learn nothing um <laughs> stupid move frankly to do that as i say after the previous series did exactly the same thing but hey ho what's chris gonna do it's not like he proofread the previous series uh we've got a new doctor in jodie whittaker as well as three new companions sorry fam I'm, I'm going to keep on doing that because I hate Bam. that. Three. Uh, so naturally, there's a lot to unpack. So let's kick things off with the series opener, The Woman Who Fell to Earth, written by one Chris Chinball. Um, that's not the first time I've called him that, and it's not going to be the last. I've got three seasons of this guy who rants us. Um, mm -hmm. Now, look, I've made it no secret in previous um, Hooniverse retrospectives so this is the first series of Doctor Who where I don't think there's a single good episode. <laughs> some of the intentions are admirable, and there's some decent stuff tucked away in the corner, just like hidden in like the side oh, of yeah, the TARDIS, just... probably inside the custard cream dispenser. Because <laughs> of whole, course, yeah. But on the whole, it doesn't work, and that covers no. this episode as well. Um, Thank you for listening to the Real Podcasters. <laughs> <laughs> This is what we call a micro sword. <laughs> it's ten, it's ten God, minutes ten long. Ten seconds long. <laughs> um, okay, I'm, I'm curious on your thoughts because, uh, as I say, we're now properly at the point where you haven't seen any of these episodes until I forced yeah. you to. What yep. do you think you know, of the first episode? This was sort of like a, 
a really terrible idea of revenge against me for subjecting you to like however many Halloween films. Though this is just even more cruel than what I initially subjected you to, but you know. Somehow. Mm. <laughs> okay. I, I'm going to have to go on a little bit of a tangent with this one, but I promise I won't make it too bad. It is related to the episode, I promise. I, I promise, right? Right. So, the woman who fell to Earth. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes, Dan. The new Doctor. Uh-huh. Hmm. For the most part, she's all right. Yeah. She's all right. Then we get to the fam. <laughs> <laughs> so while Jodie is, you know, doing 13th Doctor things by Allegedly. falling to the sky, no, falling to the earth, no less, not falling mm-hmm. to the sky, that would be very strange. <laughs> the TARDIS really further. doesn't like her. <laughs> yeah. So one of the first characters we introduced to is the character of Ryan, who is dyspraxic. Yeah. Little known fact, I'm dyspraxic. Are you? Yeah, I, I, I've I never told you this in my life. I don't know why, but I was diagnosed when I was nine. Oh. Yeah. I mean, so this, I mean, I mean, this isn't the time to like reveal this to me. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I only did this because it's relevant. Is it because it's well, relevant? Well, I suppose it makes because... sense because I roast you all the time. All I've done is roast <laughs> Ryan as a character. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, now it makes perfect sense. So... <laughs> When you see the fact that Ryan can't ride a bike, I know that struggle because as somebody who is dyspraxic, I know the struggle of not being able to ride a bike. I can ride a bike now, but I it took me longer than what it took a normal person. Right. Like, I didn't actually learn until I was, like, sort of, like, 13, 14, something like that, where it's, like, every other kid could ride one. I was the, the kid outside of that. I couldn't do that. Like, oh, wow, my okay. balance is terrible. Like, I can't, like, roller skating and stuff like that is an absolute no-go. Mm-hmm. Can't do stuff like that. Things involving coordination as well, like Ryan climbing up things. I'm like, yeah, that is actually relevant. It's just an absolute piss take (laughs) that it's never, ever, ever mentioned, ever, ever again, nor utilised ever, ever again in this series. What are you playing at, Chibble, you absolute fish finger? (laughs) Well, no, here's the thing. It is brought up a lot. They just don't do anything with this. It's just like... Like the first episode, I'm like, okay, that's actually really brave because they've they've brought in a character with a neurological issue. I'm like, that is good. Like, you, you've brought in a diverse cast, and one of which has DCD, Development Coordinational Disorder, also known as dyspraxia. So I was like, okay, yeah, I automatically can relate to this character. I like him. Then you just get through every other episode and you're just like, what was the absolute point making this character dyspraxic? They never, ever do anything else with it bar that episode. So it's like Chibnall just teased the audience with, oh yeah, here's a different character for you, but I'm not going to do absolutely shit with him for the rest of the series. Yeah, there's a lot of things that are set up in this episode that just kind of... They just feel one shot. Like, ugh. But But anyway... Tim Shaw. Well, actually, the fam. Continue with the fam. I love Graham. <laughs> Graham's brilliant. I mean, like... For the most br- part. I mean, it's Bradley Walsh. It's just, like, his natural charm. Yeah, definitely. Yaz is pretty good. I mean, again, like, introductory. They, I think every Doctor Who episode just, just has that struggle with characters, but this is just seemingly the worst bar Ryan. But again, because I'm dyslexic, I can relate to that character, whereas most normal people couldn't. They're like, yeah, all right, then. Don't really see how this is relevant, but, you know, hey-ho. So, the villain, <laughs> Tim Shaw. Uh, hmm. The popsicle man with teeth in his face. I called him toothless, <laughs> which is just funny. I just called him an, a really, like, sinister dentist. <laughs> You, you know, takes the teeth of his victims. <laughs> <laughs> Stick a tooth there. Mm, <laughs> cavity. <laughs> cavity, I'm going to place that right next to my cheek. It's... I mean, Chibnall's writing in this, it, it just shows really that this series isn't exactly going to be strong. I mean, 42 
from many, many series ago. That was just a warning. That was a warning. It was. Why didn't anyone listen? Why didn't they listen? <laughs> Look, it's definitely not my favourite episode. It's not brilliant, but I'd say it's just okay mm-hmm. at best. If only because of Ryan. But again, I probably would have liked the series more if they explored the whole thing of Ryan being dyspraxic and how that impacts him as a character within Doctor Who because I think they could have made it really interesting. But they don't. They just leave it at that. I'm like, great. You've just created, like, another Clara. Oh, didn't we mention Clara again? We're trying really hard to not reference her again. But it just happens to be that every episode, the characters just become a little bit more cardboard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's safe to say, like, a lot, of the, a, lot, a lot of the issues that come from this series um, stem from this episode. I mean, starting with Geordie Whittaker as the Doctor... Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to be talking negatively about this doctor a lot, and I mean a lot. Oh, I know. Oh, but, I know. I mean, I shouldn't even. I shouldn't. I shouldn't even have to say it. Please bear in mind, um, because I think it's fairly obvious. It's not the actress's fault. It's not George. It's not Geordie's fault. She's done. Oh, no. She's a really good actor. I mean, like Broadchurch, Attack the Block, um, Smokes. Like just like she's done a lot of stuff. She's really damn Black good. Mirror as well. She was in an episode of Black Mirror. Yes, yeah, she was. Yeah, um, and. The, the issues aren't with her. It's absolutely on the writing and the direction. Um, you know, she's absolutely doing her best with what she's given. Right? She's been doing that for the last four or five years that we've been with her. But in this episode, she's kind of given a get out of jail free card with how completely all over the place she is because it's post regeneration. It's pretty well stated that the doctor's usually yeah. a little bit messed up. Um, she channels a lot of 10 and 11 a lot in this. Oh, so, yeah, it's like a hybrid between those two doctors. It's really quite Yeah, like... so there isn't really... Um, didn't we go with the hybrid? Um, so there's God not sick. really a lot of, like, actual 13. And if I'm mm. honest, it takes another series and a half for me, Percy, before we actually get any idea what kind of doctor she is. And as I say, unfortunately, this does extend pretty much to her final story, which you'll eventually get to, where I simply eventually. don't know from here until then what kind of doctor the 13th doctor is. Um, yeah. It's uh, pretty much the same with, with the companions as well. Um, because I know a lot of people have made the arguments of, oh, well, there's too many. Therefore, that explains why uh, why they're so poorly written. Well, no, actually, no. They, <laughs> they are given loads to do, especially in this episode. They've got the first 15 minutes all to themselves. And then as soon as the doctor rocks up, it's just silence. I've got absolutely nothing to yeah. do. Um, like there's that moment with um, when they realise they've got the DNA bombs in their necks and there's just no reaction from them at all. It's just a lot of exposition and they just stood there. I'm like, in, in, in any real world scenario, you would be kicking and screaming right now. Yeah. Like, sure. It's like, oh, just, a, just another day in Sheffield. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, it is Sheffield, isn't it? Where it's at? Sheffield, yeah. Yeah. Just another day I, in Sheffield. I really got hate a DNA bomb on us. I just really hate the fact that they don't believe that, like, aliens exist. I'm like, this series has existed before 2018. I'm sorry, I hate the fact that they keep on doing this every few years, just, like, resetting, like, the idea. Like, can't we? It's like, Um, did people just get, like, a memory wipe or something like that? It's like, what? Yeah. um, Come on. It's like you say with Bradley Walsh. He is the best thing in this episode, and really the best thing about Series 11, frankly. And, oh, but yeah. that is mostly because in reality he's not playing Graham, he's playing himself. He's just playing Bradley Walsh. Well, there isn't see, much of a Graham as a character just doesn't really exist because again, Chibnall just decided that side characters don't need to be written. Apparently, they don't need to be developed. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just literally Bradley Walsh playing himself, and it's absolutely fine. Yeah, and I think it works. You know, he's got he's got that immediate likable charm, and he honestly he could recite any dialogue written in the history of writing, and he could fool you into thinking it's Shakespeare. That's how good he is he in the series. And um, despite really some clunky and despite some clunky exposition here and here and there, I do actually quite like the relationship between Graham and Grace. I think it's quite cute. Um, oh yeah, something that's you know is you know is a major impact on the rest of the series because of course, pretty major twist. Grace dies at the end of this. Which I think I was pretty brave for a first episode as well. I was like... Oh, definitely. Wow. Um, Wasn't expecting that. 
it was actually way when I when I came back to rewatch this, I actually looked back to um, notes I'd written on my thoughts on this opening episode, and it's weird how initially my favorite character was actually Ryan, but that's mm. changed now because of because of the perspective of what happens further on in the series, where he's got nothing to do. Um, yep. Like for example, the very first thing we see in in this episode is him making a YouTube video. Which I thought, oh, we've actually got like a vlogger or something. No, we never see that again. That's just not a thing. I'm like, I'm like, I would like to see that, even just for like, like maybe maybe like a temporary companion of like a few episodes. Just have them be like a vlogger, and they're just trying to like, to just like record a lot of their adventures with the Doctor while 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 like you the, see while that like the just would to have them. been absolutely ideal. Yeah. For an episode like just a montage of trips with the Doctor and just like vlog it, mm-hmm. that would have been brill. But yeah. of course, doesn't happen. No, of course not. Spoiler. Um so yeah, Ryan's a bit of a blank canvas. Yaz, however, is, uh, and I've written this as this, Yaz is the equivalent of dropping something behind the washing machine and forgetting it's there and, and, until you hear a noise <laughs> coming from us. <laughs> like the Doctor, Ryan and Graham are all like doing the thing that, in the basement and like Yaz just like six hands up, I'm behind here, uh, guys. Oh, Yaz, hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Did you know as well that Yaz is actually a police officer? I, I would never have happens have again. <laughs> pointless. Absolutely pointless. Um, would, have, as is... would have never have ever thought of that. Nah. No. Nah. Um, and of course, we've got a big bad for this episode. Well, big bad. Bad. Um, in the form of Sim Shah, otherwise known as Tim Shaw. Tim Shaw. Like, <laughs> um, God's sake. Uh, a, a, a warrior from the Stenza race that has taken huge creative liberties with both the Predator and the Tooth Fairy. Um, he's not... <laughs> <laughs> it's just... A basic... Oh, I'm never going to be able to watch Predator again. Thanks, Reagan. <laughs> no, it's you're not. literally the Predator and the Tooth Fairy combined. <laughs> like, what the hell? No, he, no, he's not threatening or scary. He's useless and neft. And no, just not no, 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 no. What? He's not just the Predator and the Tooth Fairy. He's also Mr. Freeze as well. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> No, well, he damn. is because he has that stupid cryo weapon thing. Stupid cryo weapon. I've forgotten that one already. I've oh, forgotten it like recently. The, it's like the freezy thing in the wrist. It's like... Oh, just stop it. Um, I do quite like their standoff on the crane towards the end. Oh, yeah. Um, That's about it, frankly. Yeah, um, but I mean, again, as an episode, like it's just very average. There's mm-hmm. not a lot to it. I mean... I think it would have been more excitable if the if the characters actually had a reaction to you know you've got bombs in your necks by the way, and oh. they're just like, okay, uh, hmm. they're the normal day in Sheffield I guess. I'm like, oh no, what? I'm, uh, I'm gonna oh die. no, that's like the best oh. impression, right? <laughs> oh no, <laughs> blankety blank, blankety blank, blankety blank. Sorry, <laughs> but the again the standoff on the I crane, talk. like everything from the crane is like. A little bit more interesting, obviously. Like Grace gets, you know, killed. Ryan is struggling because of his dyspraxia, climbing up a crane, and he manages to do it. Bless him. Yeah, I couldn't do that. I'd nope. fall to me death. <laughs> I'm very clumsy. I know. I know. You the are. standoff on the crane between the Doctor and Tim Shaw is pretty interesting. There's definitely a bit of anxiety there. It's like, oh god, somebody's gonna fall. Please mm-hmm. no. <laughs> But it's in the end. It's just like, ugh, I'm just gonna send you back wherever you came from. No, like, okay. Yeah. Finn. Finn. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I do actually find the cliffhanger ending quite funny because basic because you know how we mentioned in the series ten one when when Bill is exposed to the vacuum of space and it's quite dramatic. Ah yeah. Everyone yeah. is exposed to the vacuum of space and this and there's just no reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Again, everyone's just like. Um, which is a nice segue into episode two the ghost monument which 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 actually you know what as a title that's terrific that's that's such a good title the most clickbait title ever for the most blandest episode I think I've ever watched (laughs) yeah again like the last it's got some decent moments um, but otherwise it's a bit meh I will oh, we will yeah. address the first bit. Um, seen as the first episode decided it was so dramatic, we're not going to have any opening titles. So we'll leave it to episode <laughs> I two. Know. It, 
it honestly feels like they didn't actually finish it in time for, yeah. the, for the first episode because <laughs> there's no other reason. Um, it's like, Chris, I'm sure there's meant to be something at the start of this episode. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we get a new um, new t- title sequence with brand new music, courtesy of uh, one Sega and Akinola. Um, this title sequence has gotten better over time for me. At first I was like, oh, it's quite short. Oh, I don't like it. Ugh, no, stop it. Oh, um, in reality, I actually really like it. I think it's, you know, it echoes a lot more of like the third Doctor's era. Um, Dan Superman. Oh my God. <laughs> This is just well, it was just an attempt no to, to look more to serious to your uh, to your opinion on it. Okay, let me guess. You really don't like it, do you? I absolutely detest it. Really? Yeah, I hate the dubstepy intro. I think it's absolutely stupid. Oh, you know what? I actually, dubstep. Like, I hate dubstep. I'm going to go into a nightclub. It's like, I hate dubstep. I actually really like the sort of like... The sort of like I can just imagine drop. like Skrillex with a stupid little DJ deck in the vortex of space and time just going <laughs> through the little thing. Though I will say the whole like montage is a bit like third doctory with all like, well, it's just very like classic era. But then mm-hmm. again, you know, it is Chris Chibnall. He's got an absolute hard on for the classic era. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah. In S- series 11, he doesn't. Series 12, he's just all about that classic era. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, he knows that. Yeah, else. it's very, <clears throat> sorry, it's very much like the <laughs> sort of like the fourth Doctor, like title. Well, the credits one where it's just like the grey vortex and it just like intertwines into each other and stuff. Yeah, that combined with the third Doctor and the fifth, so it it's definitely got that classic theme to it. Though, as you say, it's just at the twelfth in the twelfth series that it's just like classic. May as well be the mm-hmm. uh, the un- the subtitle for this Doctor Who classic. There is actually something that I do. I think one of the reasons why I like it more, especially when I started writing the script for this, is uh, around the same time that I started writing it because I wrote I write these far in advance, especially for Doctor Who because it's fairly, oh I know it's fairly, you know it's fairly easy oh I know I've already got the running order for series thirteen I'm not going to show it to you yet obviously because spoilers, um, but um, do you know a YouTuber called John Smith? No. You've probably seen his stuff in passing. Uh, he went viral for doing a fake Doctor Who 50th, 50th anniversary trailer years ago. And he also did a Doctor Who Sherlock CGI kind of short film thing. You might. Right. Um, it, it, I mean, the it kind of rings a bell. I mean, I, I remember seeing something about Doctor Who, like like a fan thing going viral. Maybe that's yeah. it. Um, but, but anyway, he actually was hired by the BBC from 2017 to 2022 to do the visual effects. He did about, I think it was about 700 shots, I think he did. Um, yeah. So uh, in the last series, he did the visual effects for the Black Hole in uh, World Enough and Time. Like, you know, like the massive right. ship with yeah. the Black Hole. He, he did that. Um, and he did the titles for this. Uh, which I think that, that, that's really nice, to be honest, because that happened with the 12th Doctor as well, because they were based mm-hmm. on a fan's version of the title sequence it's nice um, that they've incorporated like fans working it rather than just use their own that's that's mm. quite nice even if it is just but i think really it's also stupid. because because i think one of the one of the positives i'll give this series is a visually it's spot on it's the oh, most yeah, cinematic it's very, the like, looked it looks great it's quality is there mm-hmm. that it's, is something especially in this right. episode i think the ghost yeah. monument visually looks terrific in fact, yeah. um, when they were shooting this, um, like the first promotional image they did for series eleven, was like there was like the silhouette of thirteen on the hill and the uh, and the TARDIS in the background. Mm-hmm. Um, that was very little um, post production. That was that was actually shot shot on, on an iPhone on set. Um, All right. <laughs> which I, I actually really I mean I mean that image in itself is actually really really nice. I quite like it, especially yeah. if you like up the gamma and you can just see Geordie's face. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> which is so weird. Yeah, um, I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely got its quality this time around. I mean, the title sequence, if it just didn't have that score, I probably would have liked it. I just hate the dubstepy score. I, I mean, really don't like it. Yeah, I think you know. Before we get into the rest of the episode, I think I would like to address the score for the entire series. Frankly, um, unfortunately, mm. I'm not. There are bits I like. Thirteen's theme, I actually really like. It's just not used often enough. And it's oh know, no, no. And, and, and especially if you don't realise it's hers, you don't actually notice. And um, which I didn't notice until after the series went out and the and they put out the track on its own with a bit of yeah. footage from series eleven. I was like, oh, that's a theme. Oh, actually, quite. Yeah, I, when you listen like to it. it like isolated from the series, it 
it's definitely better. So I do agree with you there. Um, but otherwise, it's very much background music. It just blends into yeah. everything. It's nothing particularly. Which here's the thing: I I appreciate them going for a different style. It, again, it feels more classic Who. Um, mm-hmm. But at the same time, I don't like the music in Classic Who. Like, like I couldn't name like the best track in in like Classic Who beyond like the title sequence. Um, and that's very I can, much the I case can think of one little instance from a Sylvester McCoy episode. The only other one I can think of is the weird um, sort of like screeching um, things from the Five Doctors that plays any time <laughs> the show, yeah. like uh, the the Death Zone. It's like. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and it just sounds like 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 a really sad area siren <laughs> <laughs> a really depressed area siren it does actually oh god yeah the one i was gonna say is uh in remembrance of the daleks when the dalek the renegade daleks and the imperial daleks go to battle i think that's a oh, cool god, little yeah. scheme i think that's really cool but yeah i see what you mean it's it's just background music for a lot of the classic ones and for this it's like you've kind of got to listen to it outside of watching it to like really appreciate it but again like i'm not a fan of the theme the mm-hmm. title theme it's too dubstepy don't like it jody's theme is pretty good everything else is just a bit hit and miss mm-hmm. much like the entire episode as a whole um you've got yeah. <laughs> you, you know, you've got our two new characters angstrom and episode i think that's yes. the names um yeah i think so characterization is pretty standard but that's about it like one's slightly nicer one is more of a dick that's about it yeah but again like it's been done before though so it's oh, nothing yeah. new it's like you know when you get like an episode like that where you you're introduced to like two sh- like characters on a ship one is always going to be nicer than the other one yeah it's, it's just like that i mean it's done in classic who before mm-hmm. um so i think the fam as well i'm gonna get i'm sorry i hear that I, <laughs> I'm, I'm calling them that ironically because I hate the fact they're called that. Well, why don't we call them Y... No. R-Y-G. R-Y-G. Rig. <laughs> Rig. <laughs> Ryan Yaz Graham. Rig. <laughs> there we go. Automatically came up with a better title. Or Graham Yaz Ryan. <laughs> gray. So, well, that's a so, gray. Talking about... Gray. <laughs> <laughs> um... First of all, this is the first time I'm assuming that these characters have experienced an alien planet. Their reactions are, are, are just non-existent. They're just like, well, oh. again, it's just like it's just like the first episode. They're just like, eh. mm-hmm. an alien um, planet. Yeah, they're all just very uninterested and subdued. But also, I really hate that they aren't more angry at the Doctor nearly killing them in the vacuum of space. There's just <laughs> nothing to do with that, which we will get more to. Because I've got some serious issues, as oh. as is fairly obvious. We're only on episode two, um, but also we've got our new TARDIS, hence the Ghost Monument. Again, really mm-hmm. cracking title. All right, the exterior of the TARDIS is fine. It's oh, yeah. fairly unremarkable. I'm not big on the. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not big on the black sign. Um, interior yeah. wise, hate it. Disgusting. I hate it. It's absolutely disgusting. It has a custard cream dispenser. I'm like, nope, 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 I'm done. <laughs> See, I didn't even notice the custard cream dispenser every time I there's an interior shot of the, because of I the watched bloody it. TARDIS. I just the see only circles. reason I knew is, is because they mentioned it in the, in the behind the scenes thing and they said they put it in because Jodie Whittaker likes custard creams. I'm like, and? <laughs> Your point is? It's a freaking time machine and... <laughs> It, it isn't a bloody food kiosk. Like, Jesus. I absolutely hate the design of it. I hate, like, the console design bit where, like, mm-hmm. there's these, like, pillars that just look like giant, like, crystals that are, like, sort of, like, pointed inwards. I'm like, I absolutely hate that. Yeah, I really like, don't the, like it. The decoration as well, like, it just looks too spherical. I hate the design of it. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Yeah, and unfortunately, despite attempts to kind of fix bits of that TARDIS in future episodes or future series, it doesn't really work. It also no. goes back to that major issue I had with, with Eccleston and Tennant's TARDIS, where it feels like, despite it being bigger on the inside, it's massive, it's just one room. I'm like, how yeah. are you? Like, no, I mean, I mean this isn't much of a spoiler, spoiler alert, I say there's no other room ever seen in that TARDIS from oh, no. Woman Who Fell to Earth to Power of the Doctor, there's no. nothing else. 
No. That's ridiculous. And the, and she even says, like, I, I don't know which bloody episode it is, but she says something about, like, a, a shoe room or something like that. I'm like, well, show where us is that. it? Where, where is this room? Because all like we see, see is just the room. main room of this bloody atrocity of a TARDIS. Atrocitardis. <laughs> Atrocitardis. Atrocit. Atrocitardis. The turdis, we'll call it. The turdis. <laughs> well, it's more of the crystal, the crystal is, to be honest. The crystal mirrors. <laughs> I hate that. I don't know why they just went with like a crystal like. I don't get it either. With the console. I, really I don't. don't get that. I just don't get that at all. No. Also, I, I mean, you know, doing a nice segue into the next episode, I also don't get, like, the love for the next episode, Rosa. Well, okay, here's the thing. I do. Mm. I do understand why people like it. Like, honestly. Yeah. But. <laughs> the main villain doesn't actually feel like the main villain. It's well, the bus yeah. driver who feels like the main villain. <laughs> well, we'll get to him. Um... So yeah, so this is an episode that has been universally praised since day one. No surprises. Yeah. Um, but I do find this episode very much a mixed bag overall. Um, I, yeah. I say, what it's doing, of course, dealing with themes of racism and um, stuff like that. Um, that's, of course, extremely important. You know, we had that in Series 10 with, you know, thoughts on, cap- on capitalism. There was also a little bit of racism thrown in there as well. Not like that. <laughs> oh, no. Not as, not as sort of... no. Um, blunt and powerful as that like yeah, my god but it hasn't got much more in the way of a good scriptal direction let alone performances which border on cartoon than harsh reality um let's start with rosa parks because you know um yeah so vinette robinson plays her who we also saw as you mentioned earlier in 42 she was in chibnall's first episode Oh, bloody hell, yeah. But she was hey, also... God, how did I not make that connection? Well, in hey, fact, I recognised her from Sherlock, because she was in a lot of episodes of that. Ah, well, um, I didn't know that. I've forgotten her name in that, though, if I'm honest. Um, very soon she vanishes after Series 3. Um, and she's actually really good in this. I really like her. Oh, yeah, um, she's she's brill. Yeah, I mean, the performance isn't the major, epi- ma- major issue, but she does feel like she just dips in and out of the episode, despite her name being the title of the episode, which, no offence, is yeah. a, little, a little bit too close to Rose for my liking. Rose? Rosa? Yeah, oh, God, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But... Yeah, I mean, it is... I think she... I, I totally agree with that, that despite it being her name, she's just sort of, like, in and out of the episode, despite it being centred on Rosa Parks. I'm like you know, you really shouldn't have done that because, like, the scenes with Rosa, fine, brill. Mm-hmm. Everything that doesn't have Rosa in, it's like, well, you, you really just should have called this something else at this time. It feels like a lecture, especially when you get to the point when they're all hiding in the motel. And then there's, I mean, I'm, like, I'm paraphrasing, but then 13 just whips out, a, like, a felted pen and then just goes to the wall and then just says something along the lines of, what, so what do you guys remember about Rosa Parks from school? Like, people don't talk oh, like this. Yeah. Like, this needs to sound a little bit more organic, quite frankly, as opposed to what do you remember about Rosa Parks from school? And also, I really hate, and this is like a nitpick for me, I don't like how they fan, how they like fangirl over Rosa Parks when she rocks up to like, no way, you're kidding. Oh my God, I'm such a big fan. For the record, I hate any doctor or companion that does this. This is an exclusive to the to, 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 Oh really yeah, like I wasn't, that. I wasn't a fan of that. I'm like, if that were me, I'd be like, you are, you are just gonna change the history of the of prejudice against mm-hmm. black people. I'm like, but then like, the fans, the fan girl used to be like, I'm such a huge fan, Rose. I'm like, oh. if that were me, I'd turn away and run from a weirdo like you. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, come on, but. Do you know what's funny with you mentioning the lecture thing? Like, when the doctor goes on about like history or something, he's always walking with his companions or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's never like in a room and Jodie Whittaker whips out like a felt pen and starts doodling a history lesson. Oh yeah, I mean, as I say, like the exposition in this series is atrocious, and this episode is no is no difference. Um, mm-hmm. But then getting to our good old racist villain Krasko. Um, what is this characterization? Oh yeah, he's racist. That's it. 
Like, has he actually Not got that. anything else? I don't know. No, uh, he's just he's just a bigot, apparently. Yeah. Um, and now I know there's people like that out there in the real world, but why would you want to use that as a as like a basis? Like, there's absolutely nothing to him. Um, like even after rewatching, I'm like, what is his end goal? Like, yeah. I'm, I, I mean, I know what his end goal is technically, but I'm like, that isn't a plan. <laughs> that just doesn't work. And then he gets taken out like a complete chump because. For some reason, the Doctor is happy to give Ryan the weapon to blow him back into the past. See, like, I just didn't Jody. get that at all. Because the Doctor is like, I'm never going to let my companions kill. But well, she's happy enough to let Ryan just send this dude back with a really dodgy teleporter to God knows where. We'll get to her moral compass in uh, in the next episode. Because <laughs> there's more to see on, on that side of things. But yeah, that's... That's something that even plagued the previous episode with, like, the weird thing on guns, where it's like, I get what you're trying to do, because I already did it with, like, Eccleston and Tennant, but you've missed the whole point of why the Doctor doesn't yeah. use guns. It's not just, oh, because I will not touch a gun. No, it's because, like, you've completely missed the point of that, frankly. Oh, yeah, um, that's very just, like, shot straight level. over the head. It's, yeah. My God. Um, and, you know, as I say, I know this episode has been loved by, like, a lot of people. Um, for me, but, again, it's like... It, it's still missing the vital things that make it a good episode. Like, I've yeah. seen people get annoyed even how, like, the Doctor and everyone stays silent on the bus at the end. They had to. Not just because, mm. like, preserve history, but also because it would end up just being, like, a white saviour kind of thing. And we're not going there with this. Like, that, like, that is the last thing you want to do. Um, oh, absolutely. That being said, the final scene on on the TARDIS where she's like, oh, yeah, and Rosa gets the medal and then they name a meteorite after her or something. And I'm like, What? What's that got to do with anything? I'm like, it's one of those things, again, it's, I'm, I'm a little bit uncomfortable to even say it's a bad episode, because it's not. It's one of the slightly mm. better ones, but my it's God, it's It's definitely got, got, it's, I do like the fact that it does tackle racism, like, quite bluntly. Like, I mean, it's it's quite brutal, yeah. I think, like, especially with the interactions, but, I mean, obviously the reality being that people who were who were black had to sit in the back of the bus and mm. if you know there were more white people on the bus they had to get off and stuff yeah. like that so the reality is there mm-hmm. but again there's just parts of the episode that don't make it feel like too good of an episode and again i mostly say it's down to rosa parks just being dipped in and out of the episode despite the episode being about rosa parks mate yeah come on for god's sake uh, yeah but then you get to the next episode um, Arachnids in the UK, once again by Chris Chibnall. I'm Trump. sorry, right? Donald I'm Trump. sorry. <laughs> this is blatantly, and this was blatantly taken from a Sex Pistols song called Anarchy in the UK. It was. <laughs> it blatantly freaking was. He can't tell that, me it otherwise. It isn't even funny. Like, <laughs> it's barely a reference. It's like, oh, well, I mean, Anarchy begins with an A. Arachnids. Yeah, I'm going to use that because I'm clever, because I'm Chris Chibnall. No, you're not, Chris. Well, you are Chris Chibnall. You're just not clever. Clever Chibnall. Spider should have invaded his um, writer's office and devoured him. Yeah, let's talk about not Donald Trump. <laughs> um, I, I just thought to myself, oh, we're doing this, are we? <laughs> Donald Trump, are we? Um, with, the, I, with the iconic, memorable name of Jack Robertson. Yeah. The names for characters in this series... It's Do you know terrible. what it is? When when that name's revealed, I just picture like some like really accountant. shoddy like Yeah. I'm thinking of like an accountant. Like an accountant in like a like a gangster film or something like that. It's like, oh we're gonna visit Jack Robson. <laughs> it's gonna corrupt on the side. Yeah. Like with I don't all this know noir and stuff, it's just like, oh for God's sake, like character names are just really bad. I mean, Jack Robinson. Mm-hmm. Come on. Could have come yeah, up with it's something one of those... a little bit better. Like, it's not the first time that, like, Doctor Who's done something like this where, like, a character is, is introduced to be, like, a stand-in for, like, a, you know, like, a political figure that's quite controversial. The problem is, why would you do it for Trump? Like, he's not very yeah. funny. He's annoying and horrible. Like, like a thoroughly not very decent human being. Why why would you want to um, make, him, make, like, an allegory for him in, in like, a science fiction series? Is it just... He exists purely to mock Trump, but it's hardly mocking because he just is Trump. Like it even says, like he's yeah, like he's like running against Trump in twenty twenty. I'm like, why? They're just the exact like like 
He owns a hotel. He's American. He really likes golf. And his morals are all <laughs> over the place. Like, he's, they're just the same characters, except one of them is an orange. That's it. <laughs> except one of them is an orange. <laughs> I just... <sighs> All right. Okay. Ugh. Look, the one thing I don't mind in this in in this episode is actually the spiders. They that's, are. That's re- it for me. Yeah. That is it. Yeah. They are really <laughs> creepy, but that's just because they're just Ugh. spiders. They are just by default creepy. <laughs> I will say the bit where they go down into like the well the no access area, you know, with totally not Trump. Mm-hmm. And Trump, you know, says it's a it's a really bad idea, guys. They so, oh my Believe god, me. do not want to go in there. You know. <laughs> I, I've been down this room a hundred times. I don't want to go in it again, okay? Yeah, I've been told I do a pretty good Trump impression. I've got to really stop. No, you don't. <laughs> Sorry. Like, I've, be, I've been bitten by so many spiders. I, I could honestly say that I've had more spider bites than anybody in the United States. Ah, oh, really, have you? Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Don. <laughs> Don yeah, the, the, the spiders are really cool. I think it's quite tragic toward the end when like it's the like the mother spider and the realization is that you know they just want to escape and they're gunned down and i'm like okay that's actually really tragic i've got things to say on that so i mentioned you know before with the roses thing i want to talk about the doctor's moral problems because this doctor because <laughs> by god she's got some <laughs> serious issues now here's thing i'm actually gonna before against this I actually don't mind. I, I'm actually going to paraphrase. Um, there's a great um, video essay. Again, I'm going to give some context to this um, from a YouTube channel called Four Nine Ideas that did mm-hmm. um, like three video essays on the Fifty Shades of Grey films. Mm-hmm. There is context. <laughs> That's really relevant to connect say. them. Um, <laughs> talking about the character of Christian Grey, where he's talking about how it's actually okay if Christian's a dick, because then something can something can can actually come of that. Mm-hmm. I'm actually fine with the Doctor morally being really questionable. Mm-hmm. You just need to actually do something to back it up or have anyone react to it. Yeah. No one does this. So in this it's... instance, with this episode, um, she gets really angry, really, really angsty about the fact that Donald Trump um, wants to shoot the spiders. He's like, I'm not having you kill those creatures. Because that's just horrible. You wouldn't do that. So her plan instead, because now we know that the, the, like the spiders are suffocating because they're too big, yeah, is to lock them in the room and let, and let them chalk to death. Eh! How is that better? <laughs> like, surely, though, like, shooting them and putting them out of the misery is kind mm-hmm. of them letting them just suffocate very slowly and probably very painfully in a, in a cramped room. Yeah. And what? Again, what? It's the Doctor fact Watt. that, yeah, and it's the fact that no one questions her. In fact, constantly they're like, "Oh, she's in charge." Says who? Us. Like, why is she in charge? She's making horrible decisions. Again, there's no, I've got no issues with her doing that. If something's going to come of it, but at, at least but have somebody happens. react to it or something like a consequence of that. But it's just like she's doing this. Episode carries on. Like nobody questions it whatsoever. Yeah. I'm like, I think I know really? why they've done this, and. It's one of the, I, I didn't want to have to reference it, but it's going to happen because, of course, we're dealing with the first female version of this character. I'm going to reference a video that, well, well like an, an interview that Peter, that Peter Davison gave. I think it was before Geordie was even cast. And, mm-hmm. you know, he, he's not even on Twitter anymore because people got really angry with him on there because of what he'd been saying, which was barely anything. You know, he was just voicing his Seriously? Opinion. Yeah. Um, wow. He, yeah, he'd spoken about prior about how he felt... Having a female doctor wouldn't have worked. I actually don't care if it's male or female. Anymore. Oh, I really don't God, care. I remember that. The absolute travesty that it caused. Mm-hmm. Oh, where, my God. Where he spoke about how the way that the Doctor and Companion relationship in the Revive series compared to the Classic series was very special because you've got, like, a weak, sort of, like, questionable doctor, who's a man, Yeah. with a very headstrong, um, very confident female companion to help them along. Swap it around, you end up with a stereotype. Yeah. So I think what they've done, and this is just me giving my, my own two cents, I could be thinking about it entirely wrong. I think they've deliberately changed it so that you don't have that stereotype. So you have a very strong, like, strong-minded doctor and companions that do nothing against her. 
Yeah, that's interesting you've mentioned that because I wouldn't have honestly thought of that, mate. <laughs> I've been thinking about this for five years, mate. <laughs> well, yeah, but I've only been, I've only just finished this series in for like four days. last week. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So apologies, I'm not like you know no, no, all fine. savvy. No, no, with this thing. But yeah, that that definitely makes more sense. Which is ironic, like, cause cause, it make especially any with sense. the classic era. Like, look at look at something like the classic era with Tom Baker, like Tom Baker's Doctor, and you get a very headstrong character like Sarah Jane Smith. Mm-hmm. It, it you can see that. But in this, it's like a total reversal. Yeah. It's like the Doctor is... Well, the companions have absolutely nothing to say and just don't question anything. But whereas in, like, older episodes, it's like, well, why? Yeah. Like, it's those three... That three-letter word, why? Mm-hmm. And, and it's a shame because, again, the it's the writing and the direction that is the issue. Oh, yes. Again, it's never... I mean, the performances could be hit and miss, but yeah. it's not the actors. And but to be honest, I don't blame performances entirely. But I mean, now here's here's where the explicitness is coming in. Oh, okay. finally, I've been looking for a warning, right? If you get a writer to write a script that is just literal fecal matter scrumpled up into a ball of paper called words. <laughs> You're not going to give it 100%, like I certainly wouldn't, so I don't blame Whitaker one bit. And, you know, no. I find it really unfair, the fact that Whitaker got slack for... Well, she got a hell of a flack for oh, the yeah. series being crap. Well, and that be- just wasn't fair. Well, because it's easy, because it's visual. That's easy for people. Yeah. Um, whereas, in reality, everything is behind us. I will say, it's actually, it's funny when you mentioned the script. We, have, we haven't gotten to this bit yet. There is one episode in the series where the script and the episode itself was shot... With a first draft. I shit you not. <laughs> Dear God. I'd like yeah. Let's see if you can guess which one it is as as we move along. Spoilers, yeah. it isn't it isn't the 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 next one, but you would be forgiven for thinking so. <laughs> the Saranga conundrum. Again oh, for... with Chinball the first. Right. Oh, here's here's my theory on this episode. Here's okay, go theory. on. Right. Uh-huh. So <laughs> Jesus oh, God. Mm. Mm. Mm-mm. Interior BBC writers room <laughs> oh, Chibnall geez. and the other writers Are sat around the table uh-huh. Chibnall sits in his rather Comfortable chair that he doesn't deserve <laughs> His throne The other writers walk in and say Right, what's the plan? Chibnall says Okay, get out your phones I'm going to send you a message. So they all receive a message, right? So the phones, you know, make that classic, you know, <laughs> notification sound. Uh-huh. It's a blank message. And like, well, Chris, you've, you've just sent me a message that's blank. All right, I'll try again. So he sends the message, pating. And they're like, pating. <laughs> Not the word, the sound. That's what the villain is going to be in this. Pating. <sighs> the pating. Basically, just a stoned ass adipos. That it's just a naked eats everything stitch. in sight. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a really like messed up version of Stitch combined. Well, Stitch just ate an adipos, mm-hmm. and that that is what a pating is. I did, I did mention before. I was, I, I, I was going to give you the nickname to the Sonic Screwdriver. I couldn't ask you because I haven't actually said it yet. Surprisingly, enough. I want to say it now. <laughs> Um, the best bit in this entire episode is the bit when the Bating eats the turd dildo. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! There's no other. Need. I mean, we haven't actually mentioned the, <laughs> oh, so- no. the Sonic screwdriver yet. It's the worst one. Like, it oh, just, it is it, like I'm it's... sorry. It looks comfortable to hold, but so- <laughs> but, but it, I'm it, not it it's the that. fact <laughs> that it's just like curved. It's like. It's actually just been like half done and it's just melted. If you literally got like two of the toys and just put them one on top of the other and just put a dog next to it. I like it how you say that while holding the mat says so screw. I do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious For God's what, sake. what that sound actually sounds. Hang on, this is interesting. <laughs> well, um, if you're gonna do it, hold it a little bit closer to the mic. Oh, there we go. Oh, no, it's, it's a terrible one. Anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, it it tries to eat us, and I cheers, and then and then it's spattered back out. What a stupid pating. Stupid I, I pating. Just, 
I'm not I'm not gonna lie, right? When Jodie Whittaker's accent just goes full blown like wherever uh-huh. she's from, I, I used to know where she's from. And she's like, he ate me, Sonic <laughs> and I'm like for God's sake. Huddersfield. <laughs> Hud- yeah, like that that Huddersfield accent. It's like Huddersfield. He's ate me, Sonic <laughs> Uh, you know, actually, I really like the fact that we have another Doctor with a Northern accent. There is a lot of Northern accents in this, and I love it. I'm yeah. like, that, that's fine. I can accept that. It's a shame about everything else. Like, again, um, Whitaker isn't the problem. The writing has made her the problem. Because who would want to episode. honestly give some of these scripts, particularly this episode, 100%? Well, because yeah, Chris because Chibnall it's... literally just shat on a piece of paper and <laughs> called it a script and handed it to this poor actress. <laughs> No, the wonder she's eating custard creams all the time. She just wants to get through the day. Like, she's just grief-eating these custard creams because she just doesn't want to do this. Can't blame I her. I don't blame her, frankly. Um, no, I, it's weird with this episode in particular compared to the rest, because, I mean, we said about how the rest of this series feels very grand and cinematic. This yeah. feels like the budget just vanished. It's just oh, corridors totally. everywhere. <laughs> Absolutely. Like... It's it's literally like corridor here. Mm-hmm. Little adipose stitch runs down corridor. Character chases it. Like it, it's literally rinse and repeat. Like it's ju- they just change up the characters. It's like Yaz goes after it, then Ryan goes after it, then the Doctor goes after it. Mm-hmm. You like, do. It's... I mean, you do have to love how like the most violent thing in this episode is when Yaz kicks the pating like a football. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed my head off at that. I'm not gonna lie. I just. Ugh. But also, this goes to show how bad the budget is. I'm actively trying to remember if there's ever any shot of the outside of this ship that they're on. Because by the end, they're try- Doc Brown's character, who I don't even know what his, what, um, what, what his character's name is called, he's I piloting the ship to CFD. I think there's a very, very brief one of when the Lilo, well, the, the Stitch slash Adipose hybrid is kicked out and then it explodes in space. That is oh, yeah, right, okay, so that's about it. Pretty much it. But, yeah, that's pretty much it. But otherwise, the entire climax is of Doc Brown's character to pie a pie on the ship to safety. And not once do we see any shot of this thing in space or landing oh, nah. or anything. It just... I'd like to have been there on set. It's like, right, okay, Doc. <laughs> Whatever his name actually is, I don't know. I don't listen to his music. <laughs> Uh, um, I've actually seen more of him on um, on like Commod and Mayo when when like occasionally he would stand in for si- for like Simon Mayo because um, <laughs> of course he would. Um, but like yeah, I mean, like, whose idea was that to ju- to to just be like okay, we're not going to see what what the ship's actually doing. You you can just imagine it in your head. I'm like, it's just, fine. It's fine for the actors to do that. Just we, just get we some like. Be doing um... that. Just get the actors or the ship pilots to just make ship sound effects to like add some believability to the ships actually going like the. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I... It just it feels like that budget was just like cut in half straight up. Mm-hmm. I just I don't get it. Um, nah. Much like with the next episode, because we are just storming through these. <laughs> Um, mostly because I'm trying really hard to not just sound the exact same in every single episode. Um, Demons of the Punjab. Um, mm-hmm. A Yaz said a story. Yes! yes. No, it's Finally. not. Finally! Not really. <laughs> no. It doesn't even focus on her. It focuses on her extended fam. It is the extended fam of a member of the fam. Famception. <laughs> Famception. <laughs> Garrick. Um, <laughs> Oh, you are you are loving this really, aren't you now? <laughs> Rig. Rig. Yeah, okay. This episode, I'm glad it's, well, again, as you say, like it you'd think it would be Yaz centered, but it's just about Yaz's fam, more mm-hmm. or less, and the struggles they face during the, the time The Partition well, of India. Yeah, the partition of India. Now Again, this is quite a strong episode, much like with Rose. It deals with a lot of, like, racism and stuff like that. However, it's not fully explored in terms of the British's involvement with this. Mm -hmm. It's just totally cut out. Now, I'm no history expert, so, like, you you know, it's just... Yeah, I'm very, very sure. I'm (laughs) very, very sure. If it's punk history, then yes, you're fine. If it's anything else, you know. (laughs) If it's it's, anything about horror films, yeah, fine. Anything else, no. (laughs) No. No. Like, as an episode, it is quite strong. Like, again, it, you know, it has been an episode that has been, much like with Rosa, I think it actually won an award 
or something. Um, I think I think it won like a writer's. Uh, I know Rosa was nominated. I don't think it won. Uh huh. But I'm, I'm sure there was the, the whoever wrote it. I think they were like nominated for like best screenwriter of TV or something like that. I don't know. I can't Ooh, okay. really remember. I saw it on like an IMDb thing, just looking up some trivia and stuff. About That's it. a that is my job, Dan. Yes, but How I it? didn't include it, obviously. <laughs> no, you didn't. It's fine. I didn't either. Um, yeah, this episode uh, is pretty much identical to Rosa for me. It's like, it's like you say, it's got a lot of decent ideas, and what it's doing is very important. But at the same time, it's it fails on a lot of things. Um, let's talk about those aliens, the Thajarians. Right. Um, First and foremost, I hate the fact that you get these really cool-looking alien assassins and you're like, oh, yes, they're going to wreak havoc. No, they're just totally pacifists now. I actually don't mind the fact that they're pacifists. <laughs> well, see, I just hate the fact of, like, you introduce <laughs> them as assassins and then, like, it's only halfway through the episode you learn that, like, they've given up the ways of assassin life because they, they realise life is more important than killing people. I'm just like, right, if you just led with that in the first place, you would have had me. My issues is more... <laughs> so... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm trying really hard to not reference... Did you... Uh, I'm assuming probably you didn't. But there was a viral video about Doctor Who that went around last year called The Fall of Doctor Who by JXE on YouTube, which was a five-hour... Um, analysis no. of the Chibnall era. Here's the thing, it's five <laughs> hours long, but it's Jesus. the most extensive analysis and critique of this entire era. It's actually amazing. I love it. Okay, well, I'm definitely interested in watching that. <laughs> and it's really funny. <laughs> um, and the dude, and, and she does talk about this episode in particular, about mostly with Doctor Who and prejudice. Mm -hmm. So when you look at older episodes of Doctor Who, or in fact just Doctor Who in general, we're usually used to um, alien races, in terms of their morals and their views, are all identical. Daleks yeah. will make sense, Cybermen also makes sense. Um, I didn't mention this at the time when we did Series 9, but I really like the fact that with the Zygons, they weren't all evil, it was like a splinter group. I thought that's, well, yeah, we, we said that's that, very like, realistic. Half of, them, half of them just want to live in peace, the other half are just hateful. Mm -hmm. But in this instance, the, doc the Doctor assumes that the, the, the Thajarians are all evil. Mm -hmm. um, now, this is something you see a lot of in sci-fi, where you just have like an entire race be evil, because it's just easier to write. Like, yeah. like, 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 like there's less world building. Um, and the, but the problem is now, the Doctor doesn't learn anything from, <laughs> from like having the wrong prejudice. <laughs> I mean, like, she apologises to them at the end because she didn't know. I'm like... Oh, I hated that. I hated like, that. I'm really sorry. I didn't know. I didn't know. And literally, let's see, episode six, one, two, three, four, six episodes later, at the beginning of series 12, we'll reference this briefly with, um, with the light people. <laughs> the lighthouse people. <laughs> The lighthouse yeah. bulb people. She assumes again that they're all evil. <laughs> I'm like, oh, for God. And, it, oh, and it's God, weird that like, it well. took me to realise it at this point. I was like, actually, yeah, th this is this is something that happens a lot and I don't like it anymore. <laughs> um, oh, it's absolutely brain scrambling. It really is. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, the Thajarians are actually, you know, design-wise, they are really cool. Despite oh, yeah. the fact, I hate the fact that, like... Like the masks are designed to to the point that the like the mouths can't move, so it's like, um, so sort of like telekinetic talking. Um, yeah, it's a bit like the um, like the monks from oh yeah, pyramid of the end of the world and stuff, kind of. Yeah, like that. Yeah, but with this, like it's just really restricted. Like it's like, telekinetic talking. Mm. I think the episode also thinks it's a lot cleverer than it actually is with some of the dialogue where like um where like the, the jargon sound all cryptic where they're like stop doing what you're doing or we will stand over your corpses. That's meant to be a clever line. That's not very clever. No. Like no, it's just <laughs> it's anyone that listens to that automatically assumes that yeah, you are evil. No, they're standing over your corpses because you're dead, because you were killed by someone else, because it wasn't us, because we are no longer assassins, Doctor, you prejudiced bastard. The, I mean, what are they called? The, the what? Thajarians. The Fajarian Riddler. 
<laughs> the jarring well me be. this. The jarring me that. <laughs> <laughs> God. Might as well do. Um, yeah, and, you know, as we said before, this is supposed to be a Yaz send story. No, it's not. <laughs> Um, I mean, Yaz is in it. Absolutely. She learns everything and yet nothing. Like, the way she is at the beginning is identical to the end. Like, she doesn't yeah. grow or anything. In fact, you know, it's it just, it doesn't work. It doesn't no, work. No, it's, it's pretty damn, like, yeah. despite it having Yaz in it and her family, like, it's just more about her family rather than her. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't really learn much from it. She just, her, her literal thing is that she goes and witnesses it. And and that is it. Mm. Like, yeah. y- you could have just sat at home and let your like auntie or grandmother, whoever does, just tell you it, and then you know done. But instead, you just make it a little bit more interesting by going to visit it in the past and see what happens. But it's the same outcome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as ever, it's got it's got some decent ideas, but it doesn't really follow, follow through or through or anything. Much like yeah. the next episode. Again, <laughs> uh, noticing where... a common common occurrence yeah. here. Why don't we talk about capitalism again, but do it badly with Ugh. Kablam, the oh, only God. episode of Doctor Who to feature an exclamation mark in the title? Wow. So for that context, this awesome. is basically just Amazon in the future. It is Amazon. <laughs> It's Amazon in the future. It's basically every like delivery service in the future. But yeah, and again Amazon. with like the char- with like the characterization of the doctor, I find it really uncomfortable that she loves the idea of Kablam. Like she really loves I mean I mean like when she explains that like Kablam um like terraformed the entire moon to be one massive warehouse, you're like, Oh my god, that's so awesome. I'm like, that's horrible. Like why yeah. are you promoting this? <laughs> I mean, considering the moon was an egg with a weird dragon creature inside of it, and now it's a giant warehouse. Well, I mean, luckily it isn't our moon, I think. It would be, it would be really funny Yeah, but it it's was. still a moon. <laughs> it could have been inhabited. Uh, well, 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 you see, it is with 10, we're, with 10% of the workforce being human. <laughs> <laughs> what was that noise? You sounded like a deflating balloon. <laughs> Oh, it was more like a really sad elephant, just... <laughs> well, to be honest, I mean, Chip. I think I'd honestly rather be a deflated balloon than be that episode, quite honestly. No. Um, in terms of, is there any, actually, a, 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 any good stuff in this series? Well, in, in this episode, uh, I quite like the, the design of the Kablam men. Um, they, are, they are quite... Oh, they're pretty creepy. Yeah. They're pretty creepy. Yeah, they're actually quite reminiscent of the Smilers from Series 5, nope. The Beast Below. Mm-mm. Well, come Mm-mm. on, they are a little bit. No. Nope. Yeah, I know. Scary. Too scary. Too scary. Really? Oh, I think the smilers are creepy as hell. Oh, you baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with this, I was like, yeah, this kind of reminds me of the smilers. I was like, especially that rigging you cheeky cracker. <laughs> I'm going to um, blam you in a minute. Oh, please Ugh. do. Please kill me <laughs> with deadly bubble wrap. <laughs> 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 oh, don't even get me started for that. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. Um, yeah. Do you know what I really want to do? You know that scene where, like, well, that pretty ropey scene where they're on the, like, the... I don't know what you call them. The conveyor belt. Yes. <laughs> I just want to Photoshop the fight between Obi-Wan and Anakin <laughs> on that conveyor belt. <laughs> like, <laughs> it would work. You can totally see it working, can't you? <laughs> To be honest, it's it's also very very reminiscent of Attack of the Clones, as well with that scene. Oh God, the droid factory. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, the, the the writer was just like, right, this <laughs> from Star Wars. Yeah. Um, the boxes. Shall we talk about the the Doctor's moral compass again? Because that goes t- <sighs> tits up again. Um, She's got a lot of moral problems. She straight up murders someone here. Oh yeah, she literally like so much for the doctor never killing. Yes, yeah, so, I mean like you have Charlie who's like who's like one of the workers at Kablam. That's actually the one who's been messing around with everything and has been designing this deadly bubble wrap, um, <clears throat> with the Kablam system actually fighting back. Which I was like, oh fine, whatever. Um, then the doctor's like, okay, I'll give you an ultimatum. Stop doing this, or or else. No, okay, teleport in. Into the sea of Kablam men and uh, and just reroute the destination to themselves, and just blows them all up, including Charlie. 
And I'm like... And again, the characters do not question it. No. They're just like, yeah, it I'm happens. I'm just like, oh my God. Like... like <sighs> like what the absolute hell man what are you doing doctor you absolute maniac i hate this like i really do like again i've got no issues and you know, I, you know i've said it constantly in, in this episode i don't mind if doctor's morals are, are a problem but something's got to come of it because it's yes, not a good thing there has to be some consequence to it whether somebody questions why she's just done that uh-huh. or if there's consequence to her actions later on but nothing like that happens it just continues on to another episode, never to be discussed or talked about again. It's like, wow. Mm-hmm. You just straight up murdered somebody in a sea of robots, which is probably like the equivalent of an atomic blast. It's just nuts, honestly. And again, like, no one learns anything from it by the end. They're like, oh, okay, we probably Well, I'll tell you what, they do learn. Like, they do they learn, learn that the Doctor is, in fact, a murderer. <laughs> but they don't question it. They just pretend it never happened. <sighs> <laughs> Instead of I know what you did last summer, I know what you did last kablam. <laughs> <laughs> We're nearly there. <laughs> We're nearly there. Yeah, moving on to episode eight. We are just again. I'm just moving swiftly on with this because yeah, this is fun to talk about. But I'm getting really, really angry in places. That's gonna oh, happen yeah. next series and the series after that. Um, with the Witchfinders by Joy by Joy Wilkinson. Um. Mm. There's some mm. bits I like in this. I think two thirds yeah. of it's actually quite decent. Um, final ten minutes, atrocious. Oh, mud people. The last ten people are just. It just feels like there's absolutely no inspiration in those last ten minutes. They just want to wrap it up as quickly as they can by attempting to make it interesting with mud people. Yeah, talking about things I do like. For one, Alan Cumming is King James the First. I really like Brilliant. that a lot. He's, yeah. he's, he's so brilliant. over the top and having so much fun. I mean, yeah, some of his dialogue is atrocious, but you know what? He's not having fun. It I mean, works, though. Like, yeah, because, I mean, I, mean I, re- I remember him from um, from the Spy Kids movies. That's how like yeah. old I am, as it turns out, because um, he's in those as them. I think it's... Did you actually see Spy, Spy Kids? No, but I know enough about it, so... Because uh, he technically plays the villain in the first film, yeah. and then like just like a character in the other two. Um, and he's really good in those. I actually like those films quite a bit. Except, mm-hmm. except for the fourth, it's 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 just it's just it's just a disease, frankly. Um, but Alan Cumming is like he's he's like probably like the biggest celebrity they've got for the series. I think comes on my head. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, beyond obviously, um, um, Bradley Walsh, he's also yeah. like a fairly big celebrity. Um, but yeah, I really like uh, King James the First in this. He's just he's he's just having fun, and it's. It's nice to have some fun for once. I'm actually glad they did something a little more humorous with like a like a royal character as well. Yeah. Like rather than just being like a really like serious character, like compare it to like Queen Victoria and compare this, it's very different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Like he's he's clearly having fun with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think as I've said, like um much like with Bradley Walsh, like a lot of the stuff is saved with just Alan Cummings' natural charisma as an actor. Yeah. Um, so I do really like him. Um, to be honest, like it's it, it's weird how like again for two thirds of the episode, there's no alien stuff at all. Frankly, like like cut out any references to aliens, and you could just have like its own episode set during the during during like the witch trials, which is actually yeah. a fascinating idea. Like that, like f- for f- for a series that's so geared towards being more educational and focusing on a lot more themes that uh, other series wouldn't do, the witch trial period is perfect for that. And nothing's done with us. It's weird. It's so like, no. and instead we've got essentially. Would be interesting to see like how it would do on its own, like just minus the alien thing. I mean, obviously have like a sci-fi element to it. You know, mm-hmm. otherwise it's just not really Doctor Who. But like, it would just be interesting if like the alien part wasn't as big a part of it as it needs to be. Like if it was all just about witches and stuff. Again, with like what this series does, it it takes on like really challenging times in history. Like the witch trials, Rosa, India, mm-hmm. stuff like this. So you know, it's it could do it, but it doesn't, unfortunately. Yeah. Which is really sad because I do like parts of that episode. I mean, the costumes and stuff are really good. It definitely feels like it's in that time zone. Yeah, even if I really hate the fact that like the rest of the characters are just dressing like their regular clothes and no one has yeah. an eyelid, I'm like, oh come on. 
again, with the characters, nobody's questioning anything. No. It's like, who are you strange people? Which? I do. I, I, I hate the fact that I had to Google the name of the aliens in this episode because I couldn't re- remember it all. That's I can't remember them, so. The Morax. <laughs> Oh, uh, Morax. Which I'm sorry, there's a Dr. Seuss people. character called the Lorax. <laughs> oh, dear. You know, what is, actually, you know what it is? The design of these things, honestly, reminds me more of like. It feels more like a more modern version of the Hemovores from the Curse of Fenric, which already is oh, by God, default yeah. better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, there's nothing. Like, all of a sudden, they just want to rule the world. Because they're like they're in like a tree and there's criminals. I'm like, what? Like again, the final ten minutes. Yeah, it's something is like so really different. like stupid or something. It's like the, the tree is like being disturbed or something, so they just decide to take over the earth. I'm like, mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Okay then. <laughs> um, yeah, this is. It's like it's, it's one of the better episodes, but again, oh, it's yeah. not. Good. But better being like sort of, you know, having quite a thin line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, this one I'm going to be very interested to hear your thoughts on because I've actually gone back and forth on this for a number of years and that is It Takes You Away by Ed Heim. Um, right. <laughs> this one's going to be very interesting to talk about with you either because I don't know what you're going to say on this one, frankly. So for those that can't remember the, this episode, this is the one with the frog. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> Some people love this episode, like, a lot. <laughs> I mean, I don't. But honestly, I actually really like the stuff with the frog. <laughs> now, bear, brilliant. Now, now, bear with us, okay? I've actually got this as, like, the last thing to talk about with this episode. I'm going to kick things off with, with, with it being the first. So, terrible name aside, the solid tract. <laughs> Chibnall, get another writer, please. Or rather, BBC. Well, actually, yeah, you did. He's called Russell T. Davies. <laughs> oh, shave you. Um, now, when I first watched this, and you have the interactions between the Doctor and the Frog, mm-hmm. I hated it. I thought it was terrible. It was stupid. Yeah. Yep, can see why, can see why. In retrospect, it's still really funny. It's still really weird. But after reading Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is like one of the best science fiction stories of all time, Mm -hmm. where it's just completely random and bonkers because that is the universe. Anything is possible in science fiction. Yeah. I actually don't mind the fact that it's a frog. Like, I actually really love the fact that there's not really a villain in this story. It's just the solar tract and it's stealing people because it's lonely. I quite... I mean, look, I don't love it. It's still stupid, but... I quite like that as an idea. It's quite different. As an um, idea, it's it's definitely different. Yeah. Compared it's to a, a lot shame of the about other everything episodes else. In the series. <laughs> yeah. Like again, it definitely has its bland moments, but the stuff with the doctor and the frog, I do think that's funny. I mean, it's silly as hell, uh-huh. but it kind of works because I like it 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 kind of just means a lot when they don't use like a stereotypical alien, but they portray it as a frog. Yeah. <laughs> like Okay, then. Like, I can see the Guardians... Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, for fuck's sake. Oh, if only. It's just Groot. <laughs> oh, I'd love that. Oh, yeah. I'd love that. I am, I am lonely. a frog. I am lonely. Yeah. Well, and so that's just I am Groot. But yeah. I am lonely. I am... Oh, no, no. Um, yeah, I don't mind it because... It just makes something different from, like, every other alien thing we've had. So it's different when you get, like, an innocent animal, like a frog. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a shame about the rest of the door because, like, the anti-zone oh, as a setting is, is just a cave with a couple of lights in it. Um, <laughs> ribbons. <laughs> Feels like a Hellraiser character, to be honest. <laughs> I know. The moths. <laughs> I'm like, little mothras. <laughs> And Mothra has more development in Godzilla King of the Monsters than like the killer moths in this. And Mothra doesn't fucking talk. She just squeals. And then dies. <laughs> um, 
yeah, just like cut, just like much like with the Morax in the previous episode, just cut out anything with like ribbons and the moths, and you don't, and you, and you lose nothing. You just have a shorter episode. Um, it would have been fine though, like have that as like a ten minute short mm -hmm. at least, with just the Doctor and the Frog and elements of whatever the story is. Because I honestly can't remember too much about this episode, bar the Frog and the Doctor. I forgot one <laughs> bit actually, and it's a bit that I really like, and I want them to to, to actually cap off this as a thing. Is at the beginning mm -hmm. of the episode. For one, the doc is able to realise that they're in Norway uh, just by, like, the setting. And I'm like, yes, you're not using the sonic screwdriver, thank you. Because she uses it way too often and does, like, that classic, like, Harry Potter kind of thing where it's like, ta-da! I'm like, oh, stop yeah. it! Just stop it! Um, stop! But there's a bit where she references because she thinks it's, like, so many years in the future and she talks about the Woolly Rebellion where the relationship between humans and sheep changes entirely and, and, uh, and apparently it's a bloodbath. I'm like... <laughs> Can I see this, please? <laughs> well, I would like yeah, to see called... this as an episode. <laughs> the Woolly Rebellion. Black Sheep. <gasps> the Witch. It's like The Witch. I mean, yeah, there's that and <laughs> Black Sheep. <laughs> oh, Black Sheep. It's hilarious. I love it. <laughs> oh. um, Philip. No, not Philip. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to I was trying to remember the guy's name. <laughs> so, it's just like know. the the blandest name for like a demonic ever. Philip. Philip. <laughs> um, Philip. What you do actually is, have as well in this episode is some, well, the start of some closure between Grace and Graham because Graham has spent like the, the series trying to get over um, the loss of his wife. Um, yeah. And the solo track in its attempt to um, pull Graham in into its universe is to pose as Grace. Um, and you do, it's, an, it's, a, it's a realistic reaction because at first he is like, oh, I could actually go with her, but then realises that I just can't. I need to move on. Yeah, um, it's, it's always like, you know, it's not you. I want it to be you, but it's not you. Mm -hmm. And I really so like you, that. You definitely feel it. You definitely feel it. Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise, yeah, it's... It's probably one of the better episodes in the series, much like yeah. The Witchfinders. Like, I think, as a resolution, I think it works quite nicely. Um, mm -hmm. But overall, it's still... Eh. Have you been able to figure out which episode is the first draft yet? Well, it wasn't the second episode. No, it wasn't. It wasn't the third. No. Fourth? No. Mm. Oh. Sixth? No. Was it this one? The Battle of Ranskor Av Kolos is the first draft. Really? Oh my god. I have a quote from, <laughs> from our Lord and Saviour, Christian. Wouldn't exactly say Lord and Saviour, more like bloody mm -hmm. Satan. Particularly in that first series, I spent a lot of time helping other writers. By, by breathing down their neck lad, lad, like a xenomorph, probably. <laughs> if only. Um, we had some problems towards the end, and, and I had to go back and do some big rewrites, as if you'd fucking tell. Which meant the version of episode 10, Battle of Ranskar Colos, that we filmed was a first draft. And boy, does it show! <laughs> Yeah. This doesn't even feel like a finale. It's a failure on virtually every single front as a final episode. Um, you really would think that as a finale, you'd at least get the freaking effort in and not use a first draft, but mm. my God. But it, I was wondering why this episode was like... Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we'll address Tim Shaw. He's back. Which we all kind of assume because they're kind of set up. The idea of going back to it, like, like we didn't actually mention in the second episode, the reason why the planet they're on is so desolate. Desolation. Right. It's terrible, terrible First title. and foremost, right, the only thing I like in this episode is Graham's bluntness of, like, I'm going to kill him. Oh, I hate that. Like, I'm sorry, uh, it comes see, out I... of nowhere. <laughs> it's, it's like, oh, he's here. I'm taking up arms. I've played Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> I am now Michael DeSanta. <laughs> the Graham Nater. Dun, 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 dun. Da, 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 well, he literally da, da, could be, but I don't mind it, so to speak. I mean, I, I'm not happy that I like it. I mean, Christ, I'm starting to question myself why I like it, because it's I just out of the blue. Yeah. It's like, oh, can, can me and Doc just have a word? <laughs> and the doctor's like, what's up? I'm going to kill him. <laughs> like, like, 
No, Jesus you Christ, won't. that came yeah, out of Yeah, I will. No, you won't. Yeah, I will. It's like a pantomime. It's like, oh, no, he won't. Oh, yes, oh, I will. Oh, yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just expecting like a like benches of kids going, Oh yes you will <laughs> As if kids are watching this, the adults aren't watching it anymore. I mean I wouldn't subject kids to this absolute sludge of an episode. No. Um so the world's most inept villain returns. Um <laughs> <laughs> I think inept has been too kind. Jesus. Well, well I mean, if you think about it, because like he goes to the earth to hunt that one guy and the woman who fell to earth, like a predator does. But he cheats, so I hate him immediately even more because because he because <laughs> because well he's basically he's a troll. just a, he's basically just like a <laughs> he's trolling tro- the game. <laughs> yeah, he's basically like a trolling Sontaran. <laughs> <laughs> he just cheats to win Sontar, glory. Sontar, nah. <laughs> Sontar, <laughs> blam. <laughs> oh, um. Yeah, he's just really incompetent, and I don't buy for a second that, like, the Doctor would react to him still being alive the same way that she would a Dalek. Like, oh, yeah. like, like that point when he starts talking over the speakers, and, she, and she's like, I know that voice. I'm like, what? It's like, he's useless. Toothless. <laughs> he's toothless. Use, useless, toothless. Useless, toothless. There we go. Um, it's just not that interesting of a villain to make like the main villain, no. and then all of a sudden he's, he's like, really "Oh, not. oh, like I am gonna blow up the earth because you pissed me off a couple of thousand years ago." I'm like, "Yeah, that's like most villains' motivations in Doctor Who, to be honest." You gotta love how we well, get no shots. Well, it literally shots just feels on. like the most comic superhero villain ever. Yeah, you it, gotta it's like, literally like, like something out of like a Superman comic or something like that. You know, he defeats I don't know Sinestro or something like that for the fucking like hundredth time mm. and Sinestro is like right I'm just gonna threaten Earth once again it just honestly feels like such a a comic superhero mm-hmm. thing and I hate it and again like the the bit with Graham I don't really mind but even if it is really out of the blue but that's really all there is to it in this episode and it's just characters meandering around with useless toothless supposedly reanimating himself after these stupid people see him as a god. The Ux. Stop, the Ux. With, the, stop with the names, for God's sake. Do you know what it is, right? I just want to know his process for naming characters. Like, I think he just gets, like, a keyboard in front of him, opens a Word document, and smashes his hand on the keyboard, and whatever Pa-ting. word, jumbled up, Ux. letter, <laughs> comes out of it, he just names that character it. Yeah. Like, the Ux. Mm-hmm. The it's like his fingers, like he was just typing Jack up. Robinson. He was just, he was just <laughs> finishing up this shoddy ass script, mm-hmm. and then he just like you know his fingers slipped on the U and X key on the keyboard. So it's like, oh yeah, we'll just call him the Ux. Yeah. Nothing more creative. Just a two letter word. It's weird that they even call this episode like the Battle of Ranscore of course, because for one, it's a terrible title. Well, it's all right. I mean, I actually quite like the name of the planet. That's quite in inventive. I'll give him that. But there's no mm-hmm. battle. It's just it's just like a minor inconvenience. Well, it's just like an altercation, <laughs> but it's not really like a satisfying altercation either. But it again, just feels like, like it was in the first episode. With this whole thing of like Graham wanting to murder Tim Short, like for what I, there's a part of it that I actually don't mind that. Yeah. Because that means that you can never picture the guy from the chase being a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> no. Even if 1980s BBC series would tell us otherwise. Controversial. Oh yeah, I went there. Jim will fix it. <laughs> Jim will fix it. Well, I don't think it can consider Graham what this will, bloody episode is. Graham will kill it. <laughs> um, but again, going back to the Doctor's moral in this, like for one, I actually really like that Ryan calls her out towards the beginning where where she's like, um, you started kicking off at me for using guns in you know whatever, and she can barely defend herself at that point. Um, but again, Ryan doesn't refute this after. So she kicks off at Graham for wanting to kill Tim Shaw. A fairly yeah. re- reasonable reaction. So Graham takes a leaf out of out of the Thirteenth Doctor's book, very very big book, with like nothing mm-hmm. in it, just like ju- just like a couple of pages. Um, yeah. And instead of killing him, or rather shooting him, Ryan stands on his foot. They push him into one of his stasis pods and forces him to stay oh. alive for thousands of years. I hated that. 
How is that any better? Seriously. I freaking and I think hated it. <laughs> the final nail in the coffin on that bit is the line that she gives to Graham after she finds out that he's done this is Graham O'Brien, you're the strongest person I know. No, he's not! <laughs> I'm sorry. You've lived for two and a half thousand years, not 17 minutes. Uh, right? That's just... You can keep on saying it, but it doesn't mean anything. Like, show, don't tell, not tell, don't show. And I'm sorry. <laughs> don't tell, don't show. <laughs> like... <sighs> oh, no, it's... I don't Especially buy with it. how it begins. It's like she's really hostile towards him. It's like, I'm not going to let you kill him. And then, like, you know, when that thing happens, it's like, I couldn't do it. And she's just, like, all serious for a moment. She's like, you're the strongest character I know. I'm like, are you serious? Doctor, for God's sake. Making some dying noises over here. <laughs> Maybe not that kind of noise. Jesus Christ. That just sounded like a really constipated whale, to be honest. Or just, you know, a whale. <laughs> um... <laughs> oh, Edison, that is going to be fun. Do I just keep it in or do I just cut it out? So I'm thinking I'm just going to keep it in. People are going to be like, are they still talking? Is it cut out? Oh, there we go. He's back. Dan is the Brachiosaurus. Mm. Mm. I hope you choke on volcanic ash in the fifth film. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh, it'd be the first time being able to do that. <laughs> what? Oh. Uh, okay, technically this was the finale. We do have one more episode. It's weird because it's like, is it class of series 11 or 12? We're going to class it as series 11 because what the hell. And that is resolution. Not resolution mm -hmm. of the Daleks, which is clearly what it was going to be, but they couldn't call um, it because spoilers. I, I wouldn't really say it's a hot take, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But there comes to something when I think this is like the best freaking thing of this series. Yeah, I would say so as well, personally. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's still got its problems. It's got, got oh, problems God, yes. by the fuckload. <laughs> <laughs> but it works better as a finale. <laughs> was expecting that. It's got its problems. It's got its problems by the fuckload. <laughs> <laughs> just... Like, a barrel isn't enough to saw these problems. <laughs> no, it's not. It's a car. It's a fucking cargo ship. <laughs> <laughs> they've capsized because <laughs> they had too many problems on it <laughs> can't blame the poor thing I'm sorry Okay. I'm giving her all she's got Captain there's too many problems <laughs> there's too many inconsistencies Captain we're capsizing <laughs> There's too much chibbers, Captain. I don't think it can take any more. <laughs> you okay there? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you weren't expecting that, were you? No, I wasn't. <laughs> I'm seeing stars. <laughs> oh, Jesus. We're also right. seeing Scotty as well, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Back to reality. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> um, okay, so. Obviously, with the title of this episode, it's clearly a, re a reference to the New Year's resolution kind of thing. Yep. Because this is a New Year's Day special. They axed the Christmas specials because they ran out of ideas on how to was keep it? on making a Christmassy. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was just a. Oh, well, okay. No. no more Christmas Fine. specials because, Fine. heaven forbid, <laughs> you got to love the fact that when we talked about Series 10 last time, we spoke about how Chris Jimble didn't want to start his era with, with the Christmas specials, so Stephen Moffat yeah. kept it to, because, because he was worried that they would lose that slot in the future. And um, what does Chris in his infinite wisdom do? He's like, I don't know what else to do with Christmas. Hmm. Let's choose New Year's Day instead when everyone's pissed or just completely wasted and they cannot understand <laughs> anything and put out an episode of Doctor Who. Perfect, frankly, Chris. Well done. Yep. Well done, Chris. Congratulations, you absolute... Cake. Inept. <laughs> 
buttercream croissant. What? <laughs> I don't know. Kind of lost a bit of steam there. A bit like Scotty with the ship. Tourette's ish. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so, as I said, this is a New Year's Day special, which is kind of pointless, frankly. You could you could just add a couple of Christmas references in it. It just feels like a Christmas special. Um, before we get to the Well, Dalek, do you know what it is? So it could have easily just been a Christmas episode. Just add in, like, a little festivity. Yeah. doesn't mean you have to go all out with that. I mean, Christ, you don't need, like, Nick Frost's Santa Claus again taking on a Dalek. I'm going to get to that Dalek because I, I... Hang on. We need to talk about the other bit first. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Um, we'll talk about Ryan and his dad after the Doctor crashes into Graham's sitting room and, <laughs> and lands on his favourite chair. That was my favourite chair. <laughs> I actually... Here's like, I love... Sorry. Graham's reaction when he opens the door and Ryan's dad there and he's just like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Just, that was like, you I just really see, hope that you that... You can just see what he's thinking. It's like the doctor's just crushed my favourite fucking chair. I can't be dealing with any more shit right no, now. No, you can't. <laughs> um, so Ryan's dad rocks up after, not, uh, after being referenced throughout the series as someone who's kind of like, just like, left Ryan to his own yeah, devices. Yeah, out the picture. Yeah. Um, and with it being new, the, the new year, he comes back to me to, to make amends with Ryan. And some of the better stuff in this episode does come from them too, especially Ryan. I do actually really like the scene in the cafe when they're talking and he just lays it out as is. And he sounds like an actual person oh, yeah. for once. And he just like, he's like, look, I literally don't care what you have to say, what excuse you've got. You left us. <laughs> like, what else can you say? And I'm like, I really like that. I like that a lot. Defin it definitely feels like a realistic conversation as well. Like it, it's he actually has something to say this time around. He's not just in the background, just not questioning the doctor's morals. Yeah, he's which, just actually doing something this time. Yeah, which luckily her morals aren't really a thing in this episode, which is fine. Um, it's just yeah. it's just annoying that Ryan's dad doesn't come up again, at all, ever again. So that's you know, no, that's a bit of a spoiler for you for series twelve. He's not in it. There's nothing else with them, so it's pointless. Well, I didn't think it would be because I, you know, after watching this series, I kind of knew that series twelve was probably going to be a little bit better. It it is because I'm only three episodes in, but you know, I was kind you of can't count that Ryan's three. dad wasn't going. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get oh, that. <laughs> so it's actually interesting. Would you like to know how they actually revealed the fact that the Daleks were in this, or rather, a Dalek was in this? I mean, yeah. Okay, so. As I can say, it's called Resolution. There was no reference to a Dalek at all. There were rumblings that mm -hmm. the, the Dalek was going to appear. The yeah. way people found out was because there was a 15-second teaser that popped up, and there was a doctor saying, this is, the, this is the DNA of the most dangerous creature in the universe. Cuts, oh. cuts to the Doctor Who logo, and all you hear is exterminate. I'm like... <laughs> yeah. Just call it Resolution of the Daleks, because it sounds hilarious does actually resolution of the Daleks <laughs> the, the Daleks just try to make amends with the Doctor <laughs> we have understood the way I've been dicks to you for thousands we of years we have understood we are in fact genocidal I'm maniacs I'm fucking losing <laughs> <laughs> seriously so many times <laughs> anyway um, so the Dalek in this this one is a slightly different one which I quite like this is actually the first time for me that I've actually been kind of freaked out by a Dalek. The mutant yes. itself is really, really good. I right. love the design. The mutant, the mutant stuff is great, right? The mm -hmm. design is freaky as hell. When it disappears into the sewer, terrifying. Yep. I also really like... I mean, at first I was a bit iffy on it, but I like how it's... It doesn't just, like, control someone. Like, actually, like, mind controls them. Yeah. Um, the actress um, who's... Uh, uh, Lynn, the ca uh, the character Lynn, um, the actress is in uh, is in Ghosts, which I've been watching. That's mm -hmm. that's from the heart from like the horrible histories people. Really, really damn good. I really like her in this, um, and it feels like a legitimate threat, especially the voice. The voice oh, is yeah. perfect. Jesus. It's so sinister and off putting. I love it, especially the bit with the um, when she's up when you know she's attempting to fight back. Mm -hmm. And she's speeding down the highway, and the police Dalek's car stops her. And like, as it turns out, yeah, ah! <laughs> I should have been controlling her from the and when, front. When when she wipes the window down, obviously the Dalek is in control of her, like 
motions and she just does this like I'm gonna have to like do it. Obviously our audience can't see it. No, they can't. But she just does this like really like <laughs> Toward the police and I'm like, Oh you're so dead, dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I thought that was pretty creepy and yeah, the voice is really quite demonic. Mm-hmm. Like, my god. Um before we actually get to the Dalek case and there, I'll actually address my biggest issue with this episode is actually um, the fact that they get rid of Eunice to make a Brexit oh, joke. I freaking... It was I'm only sh- a matter of time. <laughs> and I'm sure that it's in this... I mean, I could be wrong. And, and you could probably tell because I haven't watched that for a while. Um, I'm sure it's this episode when, when the Dalek eats up the Wi-Fi... <laughs> across like the whole of Britain and there's that brief conversation there's a brief scene with the family when the mother's like we're gonna have to have a conversation and the kids are like what I'm sure it's I'm sure this yes it is I'm pretty episode. sure it is yeah because she goes into this wherever it is and just downloads a bunch of data off this server thing which mm-hmm. I'm assuming is like Wi-Fi and shit yeah, I did, 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 did that, that that was Chibnall's attempt at comedy. And it's definitely an attempt. It's just not very funny. Not a very good attempt. It's not, it's not funny. It's not funny, Chris. What are you doing? What are you doing, well, what? <laughs> well, what did you expect? Stop it, really? Chris. <laughs> Stop Frickin it right there. Chibnall. What did you expect? <laughs> um, but yeah, okay, so the Dalek case thing bit. All right, okay, actually, first of all, the opening of this episode is bullshit. Because you're telling, because again, we now have a Tim Shaw level Dalek. <laughs> well, it's blue as well, so it that doesn't is so help. inept. It's beaten <laughs> by three people with sticks and fire. <laughs> and I'm sorry. And the take a leaf out of shitty science fiction book was like, do we blow up the creature? No. Let's kill them. Let's chop them up into three pieces and put them at different ends of the earth. Just melt it down and turn it into a into a McDonald's burger. Just do that instead. <laughs> You t- just <laughs> <laughs> ah yes, I'll have the McDarlick, please. The McDarlick, <laughs> the McScarrow. <laughs> 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 yeah, so... I'll have a McDarlick and some uh, McScarrow fries, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the casing bit, casing looks absolutely ridiculous. Deliberately, right? So. Do you want to know what this design reminded me of? Again, I have my theory of how this came to be. Mm-hmm. One of the writer's kid came back from pottery class with, like, one of those really, like, terrible mugs. He's like, that's for you, Dad. I was like, right, that's the Dalek design. <laughs> the bottom is humongous. Yeah, it Like, is... that Dalek is thick. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom of the Dalek is quite thick. That is a very like interesting is. analogy. There's absolutely going on a t-shirt for you for Christmas. I'm sorry. <laughs> That Dalek is just so thick. Like, my God. And, like, its torso is so teeny-weeny. Actually, you know what, actually? There is actually a bit of a funny thing with that Dalek. It's actually so small that that this is the first time you couldn't have a person inside the Dalek. Um, Oh, you can so tell. So it is actually... So it's actually remote control. I actually really like that. That's actually really cool. Yeah, see, I'm glad at least there's bits with... (laughs) remote control i mean the cgi is pretty ropey in it at times especially mm. when it goes on a massacre well here's oh the thing oh my god this thing is built out of sheffield steel <laughs> and it has missiles where in sheffield oh, is there missiles i hated i absolutely <laughs> detested when they fire the tank missile and the dalek <laughs> fires one too and it has that really stupid scene of the missiles getting closer and closer to each other and then an explosion i'm like Right, that's something Michael Bay would do. Can you can you just not, Chris, please? Yeah, it's... I know you've ruined Doctor Who, but you don't need to ruin it anymore, please. Yeah, is it? This doesn't make... That scene doesn't make any sense. Again, because it's because it overpowers the army, but it's beaten by three people with, with, with like, sticks yes. and swords. I'm like, one of these things is not like the other. <laughs> Which I wonder one is what it, the Chris? Dalek's name would be. Like, obviously, you know, you get, like, Dalek Sekhan there. This one's just Dalek Thick. Dalek Thick. With three C's. <laughs> Dalek Swall. <laughs> Dalek Fat Ass. <laughs> Jesus. Um, yeah, it's, as I say, it's not a great design, but at least it wasn't supposed to stick around, like, deliberately. Well. 
Yeah, I do like the you fact that like it's... more of it soon. <laughs> in like a desperate attempt to like make weaponized machine, it, it does do that quite well. I'm like, well, yeah, they're not going to get like a fully perfect Dalek suit mm -hmm. in like, you know, which when someone has like very little around them. I mean, like, there's Dalek elements to it, definitely. Mm. But I mean, oh my God, it's just like a bad pottery project. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think as like final thoughts on this particular episode, I think it is to say that I do, I, I do agree. This this episode is probably the strongest of the series. But again, it's like it's still I still struggle oh, yeah. to call it good. Despite having some genuinely really good ideas, and I think credit where credit's due, Chibnall did actually quite a good job of at, at updating the Daleks for the first time in a very long time. Yeah. And the only time I've felt even threatened by a Dalek outside of its casing. And it's just the one of them as well. Like, I really like that. Like, that yeah, because it's, like really well. it's like a scout or something, which I think really yeah. does work. Because mm -hmm. it's, I mean, um, I kind of like the fact that, like, it's, I mean, the, the stuff with, like, it being killed and scattered across, like, different parts of the Earth, that just feels like something out of freaking, like, a like a fantasy horror movie with like a giant skeletal being or something like that. And if it gets all its body parts back together, it's just going to reanimate and cause chaos. It just feels yeah. desperate like that. Hellraiser. But I do, yeah, <laughs> I do find that like when it's out of its casing, it actually feels a little bit more intimidating. I mean, especially the stuff in the sewer, like mm -hmm. where it's disappeared and like you just don't expect it to have attached itself to somebody. You're just like, oh, it's just wet in the sewer. But then like it's especially the danger the if it gets out... On the wall, oh, yeah. really creepy. Like, nah. and all you see is like the the like the the, f the slime from where it's been. It's like, oh, it's disappeared. Where's it gone? <laughs> oh, no, it's gone. Oh. Um, <laughs> I will say yeah. that. I mean, it's basically Dalek Tim Shaw because it's blue. <laughs> Jeez, that's doing it's that's a doing slush it puppy Dalek thing. <laughs> um. But yeah, I quite I quite like the episode. Um so yeah. here, here, here about the entire series, which as I say yep. is the first series, not the last, um, where I don't like a single episode. Well I well I, I, I like bits, but I don't think there's a good episode in the series. I wouldn't it's say a there's a single trailer. good episode, like it is an absolute wreck mm -hmm. of a series. Like there are episodes that have good moments, but just because they have good moments doesn't necessarily make them good episodes. There's yeah. not a single one in this series. The special is by far the best one, and even so, the special isn't exactly like special. We'll say, like Hardly. it's just, it's it's definitely better in some ways, but my god, this is an absolute freight wreck. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, and as we get to our final thoughts, you will have also noticed that there wasn't actually a story arc in series eleven at all. <laughs> wasn't anything. I didn't notice half the arcs, to be honest. Series twelve has one. <laughs> Oh, the, 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 we're having a conversation because well I'm three episodes in I'm going to have it done probably within the next few days because then I'll just have to go on to you'll have two weeks after that to finish series, series 13 it's fine because, I, because I'm well that's because not exactly going to take long <laughs> that's not exactly going to take very long no it's not um, watch, uh, watch Wednesday on Netflix and said I highly recommend that I have have you I have. I have finished it. Don't don't spoil it. I'm I'm on episode six. I'm nearly. I'm nearly yeah, f I really like it. We finished. Me and Josie finished it in like a day and a half. Because of course we really did. I kind of watched the dance I sequence in episode. So spoil it, but I'm not gonna. Yeah, no. Can we? Do Actually, there's no point in doing it and doing a podcast episode on this. Oh no, no. We'll do it in like the pre-intro rambles next week because because I'll finish it by. Spoiler: time. Batman dies. Fuck's sake, man, Dan. I swear to God. I'm cancelling you on Twitter. I oh, don't, I, God. I, I don't even use Twitter. It's fine. Um, All right, fine, fine. It's not Batman, it's Scotty. No. He, he crashes, he crashes the ship into the school, all right? God's sake. Um, yeah, we went on a tangent on that one. Yeah, uh, that is our thoughts on Doctor Who Series 11 and a bit of Wednesday for some reason. Um... Yeah, as I say. I mean, we can you really blame us for going on a tangent considering what we've just spent like an hour and 50 minutes talking about? 
it's not even the longest we've gone talking about Doctor Who. <laughs> it's close, but pfft. Yeah, but you see, with, with other Doctor Whos, they've been like, good, this, no. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, th yeah, if we're going to have like a one-word review of this series, it's just, no. <laughs> just no. I can think of a few words. You're not allowed to say them now because, because you've gone over the profanity limit I put in. I didn't have one. I'm kidding. You can say whatever you want. Go on, Dan. Do it. Maya jokes you. Y yes. No, that that's directed at Chris Chibnall. And oh, Maya right, jokes okay. You. <laughs> I was going to say, like, what? <laughs> it's a bit harsh, Dan. I'm being generous. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, this feels like a absolute mockery to Doctor Who fans. Like, it's just literally as if Chris Chibnall went outside, shoveled dog shit onto a script and then just handed it around. That is honestly what this series is. It's pretty bad. Yeah. It's pretty terrible. Series 12 is going to be the interesting one, which, as I've said, we're going to be talking about next week. Um, so that should be... That one's going to be interesting. I think it's a better series. But... I mean, I'm only three episodes in and it's definitely just better. I mean, like, hell, the episodes aren't exactly, like, you know, masterful. Just wait until you get did to Did you see what I did 10. there? No, no, I would do that. Just wait, <laughs> just wait until you get to episode ten, because yeah. I am going to be seeing a lot, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I'm also oh, going to no. be making references to Star Wars Episode Nine, randomly enough, which there will be context for Dan later <laughs> once he's seen it. Anyone that oh, has gosh. seen it, they know exactly what I'm talking about. But yes, uh, thank you very much for listening. I really hope you enjoyed us uh, as we, dis in our descent into anarchy and chaos <laughs> and and destruction and death. Well, it's literally just the Purge Chibnall era. <laughs> <laughs> I like that as an idea. I wouldn't mind that. Oh. For 12 no. hours, Chris, Chris Chibnall is just let loose. Oh no, no! <laughs> the world's got enough paper. problems as no! it is. The world's got enough problems as it is right now. We don't need him getting back into Doctor Who, right? We've only just got rid of the bloody Cretan. The, the Cretan? <laughs> the Cretan? Oh, Jesus. Anyway, yes, as I say, thank you very much for listening. I really hope you enjoyed us. Like, share, subscribe, all that sort of crap. Um, any support is, as ever, really appreciated. We're getting to, to the end of the year now. We've got three episodes of this podcast left for 2022 and two of them are Doctor Who episodes. Yep. Be, yeah, that's going to be fun. But yes, uh, we will see you again next week for our Hooniverse retrospective on Doctor Who series 12. Gah, that's going to be interesting. But until then, it mm -hmm. is goodbye from Dan. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.